Everyone knew that Nihal Sarin versus Sanan Sujiro match would be very close. Although Sanan was 2661, Nihal's live rating is close to 2660, and so it was a match of equals. The first game ended in a draw, and now the second game, Nihal had the black pieces. From Nihal's opening, it seemed as if, you know, he was okay with kind of a solid position. He played e4, e5. The Rui Lopez was on the board, castles, bishop e7, rook e1, b5, bishop b3 and he castled. And if Sanan would have gone c3, I believe Nihal would have responded with d5, the marshal. However, Sanan played the anti-marshal system with a4 and Nihal already had experience in this line. He played bishop b7, d3, d6, knight d2 and now knight to d7. The knight is coming to c5 where it will hit the bishop and also the pawn. White went c3, knight to c5, bishop c2 and now knight takes a4, bishop takes a4, b a4, rook a4. Let's try to assess this position. What has happened is black has got the bishop pair here and a weakness on a6. White is happy with it and he intends to push his pawn to b4 to kind of pin down the weakness and attack it later. Nihal very quickly understood here that his counterplay is based on the break f5, right? So that's the reason why he quickly rerouted his bishop to c8. Very nice move uh, by him. Knight went to f1 and white wants to play his knight to e3 to control the f5 and d5 squares. So Nihal just in time got the move f5. Now all the pieces like after knight e3 takes takes are still on their initial squares like rook f8, bishop c8 but they are already very active. So first Nihal took care of this threat of queen d5 check where you will lose your knight. So he played king h8, b4 and now queen e8. The queen is making way to g6 or h5 to put pressure. That's why Sanan moved his knight away. And now Nihal kind of poked his opponent's position with bishop h4. Now the f2 square is weak. He's trying to put pressure, trying to provoke g3. Because once you play g3, the light squares become weak. And you know, the light square becomes uh, light square bishop becomes active. So rook e2 was played, trying to defend it. And now knight came to e7. So you can see Nihal bringing in his knight into the game. And df1. And now he went knight to g6. The knight is moving to f4. It was also possible to play queen g6 here, attacking the pawn on e4. And if you go knight g3, I can simply take, take and maybe h takes and then take the pawn. That is one possibility. The other move could be f3, which is in general a very desirable move if you are playing with uh, black because then it weakens some squares. Also, the queen's influence is reduced. Knight g3 is no longer possible. So, it would have been nice. But he went knight g6, which is also a fine move. Knight to g3. And he put his knight on f4. Now, the rook moved away. And here, Nihal simply played rook b8. So, that there are no b5 threats and pin down the uh, a5. Knight to f5. And now, another nice move. Black to play. What would you play here? So your bishop is hanging and Nihal simply said right now there is no point of any tactics happening. Like you know you, you try to calculate something but the rook is there. So he just simply dropped back the bishop to this square. As you can see all the pieces on the last track but they are all pretty active. Knight g3. Now the queen moved in. Queen to g6. f3 and the pawn pushed ahead with h5. Very nice move. You know, it's a battering ram there. The pawn is going to move forward and just weaken these pawns. King h1, h4. I liked how Nihal understood that h3 needs to be played. The knight can come back and suddenly the position of the white king, although seems secure as of now, is going to get really weak. Rook f2. The knight uh, queen went to h7. Maybe looking at the move g6 knight went to c4 and now nihal could have played knight to g5 which is a nice move 
looking at g6 and then there is a pin here he can threaten the e4 pawn i think black is clearly better here but nihal went bishop b7 he has a new plan in his head which is that this is this king is weak so i want to play d5 king h king g1 and now d5 now you can't take here e takes d5 because after queen f5 takes already queen e6 and now this bishop is very active down the long diagonal so he went d5 and sanan rightly took the pawn now the position got very very complicated it's the 33rd move here and already the players are down to their last minute or so on the clock so after bishop e4 the right move was queen b3 now such a move is very difficult to find especially because uh, the knight here can be defended with bishop f5. What Sanan had to see is to take here on e6 with the queen, bishop e6, rook f8. Now if you block here with the bishop, that is a brutal check weight, smothered weight. Uh, queen g8 is possible, but after rook g8 takes and rook a6, the position is round about even. But in his uh, time pressure, he went knight d7 and once again Nihal correctly realized that this rook is okay to be given up he went rook f5 uh, here knight takes b8 was played maybe rook f5 was also possible but after let's say queen f5 knight b8 there are many ways to uh, you know get an advantage here but the most the best way is to play c6 trying to get the bishop out from here and give a check so rook a6 and you play bishop f3, queen uh, f1 and queen g4. The idea is to get the bishop back to d5, queen e4 and this long diagonal is very very weak. Uh, yeah, in general here bishop c2 would have been very desirable instead of the move c6 which is winning. Bishop c2 but the problem is the move rook a5 which attacks the queen and that is the reason why Nihal is not winning here but in the game he did not take the rook he played knight takes b8 now Nihal took here king takes and bishop c2 would have straight away won the game this time because after let's say queen e2 check you have uh, queen e2 you have queen f5 and then you can take on a4 but you can also take here on a4 and if queen takes e6 then there is queen c2 check and you are going to win this bishop next. But Nihal went queen f5, king e1, king g1 was the best move here. And once again, he had to see this c6 idea. King e1 was a blunder. Uh, and Nihal now could have won the game very quickly with the move bishop f3. Because if you see, queen d2 is met with bishop g5. Queen d3 is unavailable. Queen e2 is unavailable. Uh, if you queen c2 is unavailable if you go to b3 there is queen e4 check queen d4 you cannot go queen d5 you can, actually you run out of squares and if you go far away queen e4 check would mate so bishop f3 is like a queen trap nihal went bd3 which is also winning and this was the 40th move now he played his bishop to c4 and he got 30 minutes extra and as you can see here the threat now is to give a check king d2, queen d3 check and pick up the bishop. It's very difficult to defend against this idea. So Sanan went uh, bishop f4, Nihal simply took the knight, pawn takes, check, takes the pawn, check here and now queen e2 stopping queen h5 and Nihal had already won his game in this position. Sanan resigned and with this win, Nihal has made it to the next round of the World Cup, which is a great, great result here. As you can see, uh, this is one nice picture of Nihal, Arvind and uh, Pragnananda entering the playing venue. Also, uh, Nihal's next round opponent will be Dimitri Andrekin, who is rated 2724. He's a former candidates player, two-time Russian champion, very strong player. Uh, and Nihal will have his task cut out. One small look at the live ratings. Nihal Sarin has now moved to 79 on the world ranking. He has moved up 90 ranks 
he has gained 40 low points and he's rated now 2661 ahead of really great players like Shiro, Ho Yifan and many others. So a big congratulations to Nihal and he's truly uh, moving up the ranks very quickly. Wishing him the best in the third round. This is Sagasha signing off. Bye-bye.